upon the earth, and though after my skin run destroy this flesh, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he will be also. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This afternoon we assemble here to lay to rest the remains of our sister, Sister Daisy. And this time I, I want to extend to the family my sincere condolence. I pray that God will strengthen you and that you will bear your loss with fortitude. May God bless you. At this time, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to the opening hymn on the program. We're going to blend our voices together and we're going to sing to the glory of God. I must have the Savior with me. Yeah. 
if you have the Savior with you today, I want to invite you to worship God with us. Hallelujah. And if you don't have the Savior today, then today presents a brand new opportunity for you to accept Him as your Savior. At this time, we're going to be asking Deacon Smith to pray our opening prayer for us. Thank you. Praise God. Just go ahead, please. What a prayer we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to be. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Hallelujah. And mighty God and everlasting Father. And in a time, God, we come before your presence. Oh, mighty God. God, you hear and answer prayer. Hallelujah. And so, God, this morning, oh God, we come with me feeling right now, God. Father Jesus, oh God, we ask you, my God, to the purpose, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh my God. Father Jesus, as we come, oh God, you know the reason why we are here. Many of our people are mourning, oh God. But Father Jesus, oh God, we know, God, that, that you are in control. Father Jesus, oh, right now, God, I'm asking my God to come on the family under your blood right now. God, I'm asking my God to come on them under your blood and to be at peace and peace around them. Father Jesus, oh God, we ask my God to lift them up, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, we are dependent upon you. And so, Father Jesus, oh God, you know what best for them, for the family right now. And so, Father Jesus, oh God, let your will be done. Oh God, hear our oh cry when we cry unto you. And so, Father Jesus, right now, God, we bind every forces of darkness right now. And so, God, everything that will be said and done, let it turn into your will. God, even the family, oh God, that are here, oh God. Oh God, those that have not know your Lord and Savior. God, I'm asking my God to the send them, oh God, and they make a right about turning their life before the time was too late. Father Jesus, oh God, hear our cry. Father Jesus, oh God, lift them up right now, God, in the name of Jesus, oh my God. Comfort them right now, God, in the name of Jesus, oh my God. Provide for them right now, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And so, God, right now, God, we ask my God to bless the rest of the service right now. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the blessed Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Let us continue to worship the Lord. Praise Come on, let us lift up the name of Jesus. We are not mourning today as those that have no home. We know that Sister Daisy live our life for God. And because of that, it says thanksgiving service. We are thanking God for a life that is well lived. And so during this program today, we are going to give God the glory. We're going to give him the honor. And we're going to give him the praise for what he does. He's well done. And this time we're going to be having the first lesson comes to us from 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58, to be read by Kiana Marshall, granddaughter, followed by a selection from Deacon Ronston Morrison. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through 
our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in the vain, vain of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Come on, good morning, everybody. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a song that I'll be doing, I hope, will bring comfort to the family. Bless the name of Jesus. She is somewhere.
sure we won't have to search for Sister Daisy. No, because she will take her place around the throne of God. Sister Daisy is waiting to hear, come ye blessed of my father. Come and inherit the joy that's prepared for you from the foundation or before the foundation of this world. We continue our program. Our second lesson comes to us from Revelation 21, verses 1 to 7, to be done by Daniel Wilson, followed by Remembrance, Sister Sylvia Morrison, on behalf of the Church of God of Prophecy. Go of time. Livingston Power. Pastor, I'm just going to ask you to wave your hands. Here you're at. We have Bishop Shaw, Sister Daisy's former pastor. We have Sister Shaw. We have Minister Campbell. We have Deacon Morrison and Deacon Smith. We have our musicians. And if I'm missing any ministers in the congregation, I'm just going to ask you to wave your hand where you are so I can recognize you. Okay. So today, the Resource Church family wants to welcome each and everyone. Family of Sister Daisy, along with all the friends that are here today. I want you to feel at home. You're in the House of Liberty. And while it's a funeral service, but we're still in church. Amen? Amen. And once you are in church, you are in the house of liberty. And in the house of liberty is where we offer praise. May the God of heaven bless you. Okay. I am leaving out my very own. Grow Town Church Choir, I must apologize. I must apologize. I must apologize. We have the Grove Town Choir. They are seated here today. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I trust and hope that we worship God today in the beauty of the God bless you. Sister Morris. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. 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 Good ev
can you worship the Lord? Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Still give him a bigger praise. Praise the Lord. Shout a hallelujah in the house. Hallelujah. Shout a hallelujah in the house. It is with mixed emotions and humility that I stand before you today on behalf of the Grove Town Church of God of Prophecy to remember and celebrate the life of our beloved sister, my former neighbor, Daisy, Sister Daisy Folks, affectionately known as Mama D. First, permit me to express condolences on behalf of our host pastor, Pastor Livingston Powell, First Lady Minister Viola Powell, Bishop Michael Shaw and his wife, Sister Barry Shaw, Minister Opalyn King, who is unavoidable absent, Minister Anthony Campbell, Deacon Ralston Morrison, Deacon Curry Simmons, and all the members of our congregation. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you during this time. As we gather today to reflect on the life of Sister Daisy, we are reminded of the words from 2 Corinthians 5, verse 2, I quote, For we know that when this earthly tent is dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made in hands, eternal in the heavens, end quote. She has now entered into that eternal rest, prepared for her by our Heavenly Father. Sister Daisy was a member of the Grove Town Church of God of Prophecy for many years. Her life embodied grace, humility, and commitment to the Lord. God gives us time and ability, and we should use it to honor God and glorify Him. Sister Daisy used her time and her ability to glorify God. She was always generous, whether it was contributing to the cause that needs financial support or offering her assistance in other ways. She never hesitated to give. Her hospitality spoke volume. Even when she was not physically present, she did not seek recognition or position, but served God faithfully and wholeheartedly. We reflect on the love, grace, and faithfulness she shared with us all. She had a quiet spirit, and her presence in church was felt by everyone. I recall the many memories of our shared times together. As neighbor's children, including myself, my sister Helen, Yvonne, and Deacon Simmons, Mama Dee would wake us up early in the mornings, sometimes around 5 a.m., leading up to Christmas, to attend morning prayers at church. Those early mornings were joyful. With our sense of humor and laughter, kept our spirit high. She was indeed the life of the journey. Thankfully, those prayer meetings were fluid for my faith, in becoming who I am today. She was also the kind of person who always there when someone needed support or encouragement. She had a gentle and quiet spirit, but her actions spoke volume. Sister Daisy loved night services, especially Sunday nights. I remember a specific moment from those early years during our Holy Ghost meeting. It was a powerful night service. And in the midst of all the excitement, her colorful headband mysteriously disappeared from her head. Sister Mary, ever the problem solver, stepped in and managed to restore calm to the situation. Those were the good old days, full of warmth, faith, and laughter. Mama D loved children. And I can recall my own child, who would visit her every time she went to, her, to see her late grandfather. Those visits were always filled with warmth and laughter. Mama D would greet her with that familiar, gentle smile and ask, A who that? Pinky man granddaughter? It was always such a moment. They would sit together, chatting about everything. She would lovingly tell her how proud she was to see her growing into such a beautiful, kind young lady. I could see the joy in Mama D's eyes. And I, and, and I feel the love between them in those simple, yet priceless moments. It was just about the word. It wasn't just about the words, but their mutual understanding. Her heart was always open, always full of joy. The love she shared with us will stay with us forever. Her affection, 
her wisdom, her presence, and everything about her left a mark on our hearts that will never fail. Being a member of the Women Ministry Department, I went to visit Sister Daisy, who greeted me with an overwhelming joy. Her kind heart would not allow her to be quiet. She immediately sent me to visit one of her neighbors who was ailing at the time. Not without some goodies, of course. The direction I took, she knew I would have long outgrown those shortcuts. With a howling laughter, she called out to me and said, if ever you got lost, call me. Despite her illness, she was putting the needs of others before hers. In her later years, when Sister Daisy could no longer walk to church, she was often picked up by Bishop Shaw, who was the pastor at the time, and later by Pastor Powell. They would arrive to find her with a bright smile on her face. And no matter how, how her health declined, she never lost her joy. The church family made sure she was never forgotten. She was always part of everything, from Sunday school book supplies to receiving the Lord's Supper. Minister Campbell, who led the charge in some of those moments, along with other members, could attest to the joy she found in receiving the Lord's Supper, as well as the deep worship that would accompany such moments. I always recalled, I also, sorry, recall my last conversation with Mama Dee. She looked at me with a calm assurance and told me her time has come for her to join the other saints that have gone on before. She said, I quote, I'm going home to be with the Lord. At that moment, I felt the peace that only the Lord can provide. Knowing that she has fought the good fight, she has finished her race, she has kept her faith. In the words of Paul to the Corinthian church, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Rest well, Sister Daisy. You have been a blessing to us all. We will cherish the memories of your love, your kindness, and your unshakable faith. Until we meet again, may you rest in the peace of God's eternal embrace. Thank you. Church. Well, I stand here to give this remembrance on behalf of the family, whoever I may have to bear with them and pause a few moments if I can get them. Um, so when I think of Mama D, um, Grandma, Miss Daisy, I think about the environment strength, religiousness. She raised her children as a single mother, taking on the world with determination that could not be shaken. Let it mind me, just close your eyes for just a second. When you think of Miss Daisy, what's your memory? What comes to mind? Do you remember her contagious smile and laughter? Do you remember her friendship? Her genuineness, her counseling, her mentorship, ease of talking to and communicating with? Loyalty. Her kind-heartedness and her jovial spirit. Hold on to that memory. Your fondest memory of Mamadi. While I share a few more with you from the family's perspective. I won't be able to capture everything due to the time limitation. However, I hope you will also appreciate them as much as we do. Open your space. So, as we look at honoring Mama, Mama D, Stacy, right, think about the incredible life she had. We can't do that without thinking about her cooking. Mama D was a vegetarian, and she cooked some of the finest meal. If you ever hear the saying, Mama cooking is the greatest, it truly is. 
right? She would cook the most delicious, tasteful finger licking, meat seasoned perfectly, cook to the right consistency with it, without even tasting it. And I said, how does somebody do that? A true master of her craft, which she teaches her children and grandchildren. Robert recalled um, the late nights. Mom would start the, Mama D would start the, uh, the cooking session around 10 p.m. or thereafter, and they stretch it to the morning. As the tantalizing aroma filled the house, we would gather around the kitchen sharing stories and, and helping her with the meal, even though we know school was just a few hours away. And by the way, you'll have to make it to school on time. Right? Devon Feds, her son, recalled a beautiful story back in 2017 when he traveled from Canada with his wife Beth to visit Mama D. And despite being 86 years young, Mama welcomed him and his wife with open arms, treating them to a delicious cooked meal. It was so delicious, it was exceptional. First remember that that food was so good that they couldn't even think about going out as they planned before. Because where else could you go to get mama's cooking? Right? First recall, this would be one of his dearest moments with mom. My grandmother, I call her mom, so don't go worry about me if I go back and forth in this one. Right? Whether it was a special occasion or an occasion or ordinary day, Mama transformed meals into unforgettable experiences filled with life. Marie recalls her birthday when Mama baked the sweetest pudding instead of a traditional cake. Even the limited resources. Mama managed somehow to celebrate every moment with us. She had a way of turning simplicity into something traditional, and every child in her care felt like the luckiest person in the world. Now let's get down to story time, right? So with Mama, Mama D, her independence, her bright radiance, she shines as no one else could. When you think of what she means to us, Aunt Laura remember Mama traveling, visiting her and Stacy in North Carolina, and left in Mama at the house with everything at her fingertips, just in arm's reach, and instead of being obedient and stay put, knowing that she's not supposed to keep climb the stage because we're afraid that she may fell. What did she do? Climb the stairs. She went up the stairs and we had to make it back down. They came back, meeting her halfway down the stairs sitting, and asked her, Mama, what happened? She said, well, I intended to sit here. Right, that was the plan. We all know that wasn't the plan. She made it up the stairs but doesn't have the energy to make it back down. So they helped her down and coming down the stairs, you know, Stacy had to stand at the bottom to make sure she doesn't fall in the trip. And even so, at the end, she's still defiant, ordering Stacy to turn on a TV to Steve Harvey and Core TV, her favorite shows. Right? The love of the children extends beyond magic raising 10 kids, her grandkids, fatherless, on her own, independent, resilient. Maxine remember a moment when her actions earned her suspension in school. And when she was supposed to return to school, what did Mama do? And dressed in her nice, bold, red, red bottom, stepping out in her haggy boots, you know, stepping, and even though she slipped a few times on the red dirt. Didn't matter. Miss Daisy proudly braced herself, pulled her head high, showed the children with Maxine in school. Now, I can imagine. Maxine was shocked and embarrassed. As many of us remember these moments with Mommy, right? But when he stepped out in boldness, regardless, she was going to show her support for her child, for her children. Nothing would stop her. Nothing would stop her. 
when we talk about Mama D, we can't leave without one of the most legendary skill as a disciplinary, right? We all know Miss Dennis, how she is. If there was ever such a thing as a PhD in discipline, she would have earned it with honors. Her daughter Maxine said that, said it's best. Mama had unmatched Nick for setting the rules and ensuring they're followed to the level. And Lana recall the moment, special rule, and I think we all can share this one. No meetings on Sunday. Now if you all don't understand that, Miss Daisy was fond of beating, trashing, butt whipping. But on Sundays, they were special to her. No meetings on Sundays. So anything you do on Saturday, you get a double dose, just in case you get something on Sunday to keep catching. Right? Get double dose. Right? So that was Miss Dick. She found that. There's another time we can recall with Mama, you know, when she is beating up. And you think you're going to tough it up. Said, well, I'm going to muster and not be proud. Well, better you proud. Because when she realized you're not going to cry, what's come next? Her favorite line. Why you think you're a woman? Why you think you're a man? And she puts it on. Then when she hear a ball out, no. Now she kind of relented a little bit. And my brother Rohan was the best at this. I'm going to probably start balling. No, I know the kid will kill me. Right? But that was the type of person Mama was. She would endure embarrassment for her children. She would endure whatever it takes to ensure that we experience love. We talk about the cookings, but there was not a soul that went hungry, went to bed hungry in that house. Why? We didn't have much. But love, compassion, food was there. What she taught us was imaginable and transcendental time. It's what made us who we are today. If it wasn't for that strong discipline, if it wasn't for that strong resilience, if it wasn't for that fortitude, we wouldn't be here. We all have a story to tell. But when you think about where Mama D is coming from and what she has accomplished with what she had, it is sheer short. So, you know, in the family we have this running story that if Mama was living in America, she would be serving her second life term, and that is for me. Right? So, when we mentioned it to her on several times, she said, but after I'm not living in America, that's Miss Stacy. She taught her family lessons about accountability, being resilient. Important to stay connected with family. Put things first, what needs to be first. Murray shared a moment um, when she a moment when Mamadi had the gift, one of Mamadi's greatest moments of presence is to have the gift of encouraging those under her care. Think about what it takes to encourage even when there's no one around, when you need it. If you want to give it to you, you have to muster the strength to make sure you provide it those under your care. She was the greatest cheerleader for her immediate family and others around her near and far. She celebrated the successes of others with pride and enthusiasm. This overflowed to her neighbors and community. So 
So when you think about Amadi, what is your fondest memory? Amadi particular, particularly enjoy life's best expression when it comes to weddings. She got a special place for weddings. She loved attending the wedding. She loved to see people coming together. The most beautiful time of life when people come together. I'm not going to appreciate it. Sorry for a second. So what can I say? Thank you, Mom, for your strength, for your wisdom, and wavering love. You showed us how to work hard, love deeply, and persevere through difficult challenges. As a provider and protector, you nurtured us with resourcefulness and care, leaving a legacy of reliances and, and kindness. Though you are no longer with us, your spirit is in the lessons you taught us and the examples you set. Today we honor you, honor you, honor your tradition, your life. We celebrate what makes you you, who you are, what you stood for, the principles, the guidance. We celebrate you because those things will leave an impactful world. And I say it again, an impactful world. Meaning our lives. Thank you. Solomon says in Proverbs 31 and verse 10, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above ruby. Sister Marisol spoke about her wisdom. Solomon said she opened her mouth with wisdom. Huh? You heard her grandson spoke about she raised her children all by herself. Solomon said she girded her lines with strength and strengthened her arms. And I believe Proverbs 31 describes Sister, De Sister Daisy exactly who she was. We have with us today Bishop Shaw, her former pastor, where we know his speech is not as fluent as it used to be. But I'm sure that I would not be forgiven by Grove Town Church of God Prophecy if Bishop did not get a chance to say something. So Bishop, it's over to you. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Uh, I would like to say good afternoon to everyone. Uh, this is uh, a day with mixed emotions. Sitting here uh, around Sister Daisy's casket. Uh, I took sick 10 years ago. And when at home, we would, we would continue our relationship by telephone. If two or three weeks passed, Sister Daisy. Don't hear from me. She's gonna go on to find out if I'm alright. Her kindness can't talk about. It is exceptional. I remember the times when she would call and ask, Pastor, we do like a fish. And when I say yes. I'm getting one of the biggest fish. Amen. From Sister Daisy. And my property, I have a lot of bird food. And Sister Daisy loves bird food. And 
and Kanisha Stewart, family friend. While Kanisha is doing her tribute, the family will be doing their floral tribute. I'm going to ask you to come during the Stewart's tribute. Amen. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. The moderator says three minutes. I stand here this afternoon to pay tribute to one of my favorite aunties. Mama D was not an ordinary woman. To describe her, I could use words like hardworking, dedicated, determined, kind and humorous. I remember vividly many years ago when Mama D was working at Miss Miss Maud Gunter. I remember she came home late one night about six o'clock and I stayed home and heard her calling Brother and Danny to go and look wood to put on the pot on fire. So I told my mother that I was going to buy Mardi and the possibility is that I might not return home because at times I would sleep by her house. When I reached there, Mama D put on dry gungu at six o'clock. <laughs> and I remember the pot came up with fire at 12. And so she called and said, James, come for the dinner. And at that time, Maxine and, um, yeah, and O'Neill and uh, Sapi, and uh, they were the younger ones. And they fell asleep. And I said, Mama, do you know, wake them up for dinner. And she said, no, James, let them sleep. When they get up in the morning, they will get their dinner. <laughs> okay, that is the kind of auntie I'm telling you about. As her favorite nephew, yes, I boast that I was Mama D's favorite nephew. I always look forward to those times when she got married from her children abroad, uh, Bubu and Lana. And I know that she would call me to give goodies for Gloria over there and I. Her children, I know, will call her blessed. I really love my auntie, Mama D. And I know of a surety that her soul will find rest in the arms of her Savior. Sleep on Mama D. I will always treasure the memories we share. And I want to say this. It, it, it's really funny for me to be saying this now. But I want to say, I want to thank her children and grandchildren for taking care of my auntie. So funny, don't you? Yes. I'm telling you thanks because you have done well. I stayed in St. Elizabeth and I heard many times that um, the grandson they would come out and they would have party from Mama D and so on. And sometimes they say, then why they never invite me? <laughs> but I, I'm telling them now that I forgive them. <laughs> may your soul rest in peace, Mama D, and may light perpetually shine on you. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I will try my best to condense my tribute, or our tribute, to three minutes. I'd like to use this opportunity to invite members of staff um, at the Winston Jones High School. So could members of staff please join me?
We stand here this afternoon not just as colleagues, but as a united family. A family joined together by our respect, admiration, and care for our team leader who has guided us with great strength, wisdom, and support. Dr. Wilson McLaughlin, we are highly cognizant that the loss of your mother is a grief that words can scarcely articulate. As a leader, you have shown us what it means to stand strong in difficult times, to lift others up, and to move forward with great determination and resilience. Your support has been a constant in our lives, and we, your team, would like to extend the same support to you while you navigate this difficult time. From your own words, we have learned that your mother was more than just a parent. She was the true definition of a champion, a source of love, comfort, and strength. We know this moment is profoundly personal for you. However, we ask that you take comfort in the fact that your team stands with you. Lean on us and allow us to be there for you as you have often done so for us. Your leadership has never been just about results or accomplishments. It has been about connection, empathy, and care. You have taught us how to weather storms with grace and to keep going even when the road ahead seems uncertain. As you navigate the sorrow of losing your mother, we want to, rem we want to remind you that it is okay to grieve, to reflect, and to find solace in the memories that will forever be in your heart. In her honor, may you continue to live by the many lessons. May, in her honor, may you continue to live by her many lessons. Lessons of love, determination, compassion, and most importantly, perseverance. We ask that you find comfort in knowing that her spirit remains with you. Rest in peace, Sister Daisy. Your legacy will live on through your children and all who loved you. To our principal, we are here with you every step of the way.
Good afternoon, everyone. Chairman, on behalf of No Merit, special greetings to all of you. Daisy and I were born and raised in Grove Top. As neighbors and lifelong friends, we share countless experiences, including playing together, attending school, eating at each other's home, and learning to sew. I remember that she did not eat meat. She wasn't afraid of the dark but she was afraid of those bullfrogs. <laughs> Our children also enjoy a close friendship as they grow up. I fondly remember her parents, Brenda and Marlinda folks. I thought that Daisy resembled her father. Miss Marlinda would ride a donkey. She would also talk, she would also take Daisy and me on trips to Mama Walk to get their mangoes. Miss Marlinda would skillfully climb the mango trees and shake the fruit down, filling large, strong bags that would carry on her head for the journey home. I also remember a time when I kept losing my chickens, only to, to discover that Daisy's dog was the culprit. When I mentioned this to her, she laughed and remark remarked that we were bench and bottom, so what are you talking about? In the end, she compensated me for the missing chickens. My heart goes out to her family and friends as I spend, send my heartfelt sympathy. At this sad time, her spirit will always be with us and her memories we hold close to our heart. Daisy was more than a friend. She was like a sister. May her soul find eternal peace. Love, no miracle. Officiating clergy, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, members of the family, good afternoon to you all. I am here not just as a colleague of Dr. Mack, but also as a neighbor to Mama D. So my tribute would be very, very personal because I knew her very well. Tribute to Daisy folks, Mama D, Miss Daisy, as we fondly called her. Today we gather to celebrate the life and legacy of an extraordinary woman who touched the hearts and lives of everyone in the community. Mama D's generosity and everybody who came up and spoke before would have spoken of her kindness, so it can't be wrong. Her generosity and warmth will be deeply missed. But her memories will live on in our hearts. Mama D's selfless nature and willingness to help others were an inspiration to all of us. Now one of the things I can remember more than anything else about Mama D is her resounding voice. Everybody in the community could hear her calling the children and grandchildren. And so it was easy for everybody to know the names because she never missed them. When you hear Mama D calling the names, whether it's night or morning, everybody in the community would hear, would hear her. That voice is no more but the memories of being a caring mother remains. A shining star has left our sight, Mama D, a precious light. Your kindness, long and gentle way, touched hearts and brightened each new day. Our community has lost a gentle giant, a life lived to the service of others and to make a difference. Her love for life was plain to see. Her memories will live on in our lives forever. To the children, 
grandchildren, and all the other family members. I pray for God's continued comfort and protection. Rest in peace, Mama D. May light shine perpetually on you. Thank you very much.
here. I'm going to ask you to take out your offering. We're worshiping God with our money now. You're going to take out your offering. We're going to blend our voices together. We're going to clap our hands. We're going to worship God. Sister Daisy was a worshiper. So we're going to worship God this afternoon for a life that is well lived. Come on, Brother Morris. Please. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air Coming after you and me Joy is ours to share Oh, what rejoicing that will be When the sin shall rise Heading for the jubilee We hover in the sky
stress from their neighbor and their works will follow them. Sister Diaz is resting this evening. And so we are here to worship God. Come on, can we just let go for a minute or two? Can we just let go for a little while? Glory to God.
Hallelujah. Today we say thank you, Lord, for a child of God that has gone home to be with the Lord. Today we say thank you, Lord, for the footprints that she left in the sands of time. Hallelujah. You heard Sister Marissa Sheard that Sister Daisy would call her 5 a.m. in the morning for prayer meeting. And she is who she is today because of the example that Sister Daisy left. And so we can praise God praise the Lord. for his daughter today. Thank God for the lives that she has touched. And this time we'll be having a selection from the Grove Town Church of God of Prophecy. And the next voice you will be hearing is that of Minister Anthony Campbell. He will be coming with the word. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
So she wanted it to be done the right way, even down to her last moment. And every time we go to the last time, we couldn't do feet, we couldn't do communion without feet washing. Sister Daisy, an old school believer, and best believe and enjoy washing. I don't let anybody else do it. I do it myself. I enjoy washing Sister Daisy's feet. Praise the Lord. Indeed, she was a woman of God. A child of the Most High God. And without a doubt, I am confident that she is with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to us this afternoon, and I must say that I won't be long, hopefully. I'm a bit nervous. I'm preaching a larger crowd than this, but my past teachers are sitting in the congregation. Yes? But I'm going to preach the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I want to preach, I want to speak to us from the book of Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'll be reading from verse 13 to verse 18 of the text. From the King James Version of the Scriptures. And it reads, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that he sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. This, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. My God. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is a portion of God's holy word. Let the people declare. Amen. Let the people declare. Amen. Amen. As we are gathered here today to celebrate, to share and celebrate the life of our dear sister, I want to assure and reassure the family members that Sister Daisy shall live again. again. Our theme, she shall live again. Look at someone and say, Sister Daisy. Tell them, Sister Daisy shall live again. Hallelujah. The theme before us today is not just here to serve our emotions. But I would like to appeal to our spiritual and mental intellect. The reality of life is this. Death when it comes. It has a way to leave behind. A world of grief. And pain. And a sense of emptiness. For some it leaves resentment. Am I talking the truth? The bottom line is. when he comes. Come on somebody. It doesn't matter how strong we are when death comes. He has a way to leave us shaking. Come on. I would like to give a rundown of what the writer was dealing with in the chapter before focusing on our main text. In this chapter the apostle 
letter to the church in Thessalonica gave earnest exhortation to abound in holiness. While cautioning the brethren in Thessalonica against uncleanness, using several arguments in his message, which can be found in verse 1, verses 1 to 8 of the chapter. The apostle made mention of brotherly love. Oh, he gave them a good commendation on it. You see that in verses 4 to 12 of the chapter. Then finally verses 13 to 18 of the chapter. Our main passage he comforted those who mourn for their relatives and friends that died in the Lord. in Thessalonica to be ignorant or to lack the knowledge concerning those that are asleep. Yes. And Paul had a reason he wanted to comfort them and to bring them into the right knowledge of God about those that are asleep, those who are dead. First of all, the apostle, he urged them Powerful. Come on, somebody. He didn't want them to put themselves in a place of sadness, feeling heavy because they have lost a loved one. Paul saw this type of behavior as one that comes from those who have no hope, knowing fully well that for the saints there is always hope whether in life or in death yeah. come on somebody Paul was not saying to them that they cannot cry over the loss of their loved one but what Paul was saying it should not be in such a way as if the person who has gone before us is without hope but hear what Paul was trying to get across for the person who died in the Lord whether in life or in death there is always hope for the believer Paul was of the opinion brothers and sisters that if we believe and understand what the resurrection of Jesus Christ signifies we will not be sorrowful as one
it is because he is risen that cause us to have this hope of eternal life. The scripture tells us in Romans 8 verse 11 that the same spirit that has risen Christ from the dead shall quicken our mortal bodies. The word quicken from the Greek, from the original text, the writer Tertius of the book of Romans was simply saying, hallelujah, praise God, that those, the same spirit that rose Jesus, that He is not just stepping down, My Lord. but 
shout. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. The word shout. In the original language of the text, it's from a root word, Kelyoma, which is a cry of persuasion, a cry of motivation. Can somebody motivate today? Only Jesus. A cry of motivation to stir up or to trouble mm -hmm. to cause something to move. This shout goes beyond the natural hearing and it reaches the grave beyond the grave. Will have no power over us. I heard Paul declare 
in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 to 57 the apostle said behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound
he was in paradise. Yes. And don't believe that it was because the man was rich when he went to hell. Because Abraham, the scripture tells me, was the richest man in his time. Yes. But it was because of righteousness. Yes. He never said it. Sister Dears is in paradise. No more sickness. For the Bible says the poor man Lazarus had sores on him. But when he found himself in paradise, there was no more sores. No more sickness and sister Dears. Oh God, finally. Yeah, man, when I say finally, I say I mean finally. I encourage us to take comfort in the fact that we all shall live again. Yes. As long as we are in the Lord and remain in the Lord. Sister Daisy shall live again because the Lord had promised us in his words. Can I tell the family members, you shall see her again if you only live for the Lord. I want my unsaved friends to understand. You can live again if you only surrender to our Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Daisy, she ran her race. And based on what I know, the little I know about her, she ran well. She kept the faith. Yeah. Oh. I want to say to somebody, God is not looking for perfect people. Because I can say this without an apology. Sister Deez would have made her mistakes as a Christian. But you know what? The scripture said, Paul said, I've run my race. And no the party said, I've kept the faith. Keeping the faith doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes. As I always say to people, if you're worried about backsliding, you're worried about the wrong thing. And if you're worried about fixing your life before you come to Jesus, you're worried about the wrong thing, you can't fix nothing. Come with your mess. Come with your problem. Come with your sin. It is not your job to wipe the sin and to wash the sin and to reclaim. It is God's job. And you can't fix it yourself. I say to someone today, we can't preach and don't give the opportunity for someone to accept the Lord. You're here, you're not a Christian. Right where you are, right where you are, I want you to bow your heads. Bow your head, bow your head. And I want you, from a sincere heart, to repeat this prayer after me. Repeat this prayer after me. You're not saved, you're not a Christian. Repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, as I am in your presence, I acknowledge that I am a sinner who is in need of your saving grace. Lord, save me today. Wash me in the blood of Jesus and make me one of your disciples. In your name, Lord, I pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer just now. You meant every word from your heart to stand where you are. You prayed it, you mean it, just stand. No need to be ashamed. You prayed it and you mean it. Just stand. I'm not going to call you to the floor. We don't have any space. Just stand where you are. Praise the Lord Jesus. Oh God. you all. When you leave this place, do not go back on your commitment. You have made a commitment to follow the Lord. When you, oh Lord, this is my friend. 
Find the nearest Bible believing church. Who loves to come to the Church of God of Prophecy Grove Town or the Church of God of Prophecy Resource or any Church of God of Prophecy where you're located? But we know fully well that we are not the only church. Find a Bible believing church. Tell the pastor, the minister, whoever is in charge that you gave your life to the Lord and you want to follow Him. And you're asking the minister, the pastor who is in charge for the next step. Ask them what is the next step and let them guide you through that process. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. I pray that the Lord will keep you in perfect peace as your mind is clear on it. Thank you for having us. Have a good today. Open your hearts today and accept the Lord. You too can be contented in the fact that if and when you depart this life, you will find rest. And this time our program calls for the eulogy to be done by Dr. Marie Wilson McCarthy, daughter. I'm going to ask her to come. Officiating members of the clergy and other members of the clergy, members of the political directorate, Miss Angela Davidson, a representative of the Ministry of Education, Skills and Youth, Region 5, members of the security forces, Special mention of woman Constable Graham from the Asia Police. I'm grateful for your presence. Family members, church family, community members, members of the Board of Management of the Winston Jones High School, Dr. Carol Fido, past chairman of the board. Mrs. Marcia Lewis Brown and other board members present here this afternoon, members of staff, I'm so very grateful to be a part of Team Winston Jones High School. We go everywhere together in the good times and the bad times and I'm happy that you're here with me and my family this afternoon. I noticed a number of persons from PAPS administration, Jamaica here. I know you're supporting my brother, persons from the Bank of Nova Scotia and other places, members of the Hottenpan community, principals Hutchinson and Grenell from QEC 43, supportive friends and relatives who are online at this time. Kareem, this one makes special mention of you and the other grandchildren who were not able to be here this afternoon. Loved ones and supporters, a very pleasant afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It is still a good afternoon. On Thursday, July 9th, 1931, the Daily Gleaner Jamaica highlighted several important issues. The following were among those important issues. One, American citrus crop this year, the largest handled. Another story, France agrees to London meeting Yet another story, difficulties over Indian Federation. Another, 
projected new long distance flags. Another, fruits cooked on the trees in heat wave. And finally, Labour Party loses eight members who join the opposition. Interestingly, all of the stories mentioned highlighted matters pertaining to international settings. Not one of them had anything to do with the local events. Thankfully, more interesting news was breaking in the rural district of Grovetown, Manchester, where James Fox, a cultivator originally from North Manchester, and his wife, Miranda Fox, a homemaker and higgler, originally from Clarendon, welcomed the arrival of their second child, a bouncing baby girl. From birth, this baby, the second child of the family, was energetic of body and robust of mind. Even as an infant, her disposition was sunny and her doting parents named her Daisy. A word that the Merriam-Webster dictionary defined as a first-rate person or thing. Her name was Apt and she epitomized its meaning throughout the 93 years of her life. Daisy was raised initially with her older brother John and later with her younger sister Bertha. She attended school at Grovetown until the death of her father in 1943. Occasioned by the passing of her father, Daisy was sent to reside with her paternal aunts Lucy and Jane Fox in North Manchester. As an adult, she shared beautiful stories of a childhood that was marked by strong bonds of love and fidelity to family. And throughout her life, every mention of the folks name was punctuated with references to strength, honor, integrity, and dignity. Her years in Christiana were instrumental in her socialization and training. And upon her return to Grovetown, sometime after the storm of 1951, she was equipped with the fundamental skills and the attitude appropriate for further training and employment. Her financial reality resulted in her decision to accept employment as a domestic helper with the Gibson's family in Albion, Manchester. She dedicated the first few years of her working life to the service of that family, after which she returned to Grovetown. Having returned home, her immediate intention was to secure her independence. As a result, she took sewing lessons from Mrs. Booth, a renowned seamstress in the community. She excelled in this craft, and sewing later became an important income-generating venture for her, as she constructed garments for clients from the immediate community and further afield. She also fabricated garments, which she peddled to customers as far as away as Alligator Pond. In her early adulthood, Daisy called the attention of Stanley Hamilton, a fisherman from Smithfield, with whom she later fell in love and had three children, Lorna, Beverly, and Neville. Their union later disintegrated. Years later, she met another partner, Charles Wilson, who became the father of her seven younger children. That is, 
Donovan, Russell, Maxine, Orl, Devon, Shefton, and yours truly, Marie. As her family grew, Daisy soon realized that two jobs were better than one. Accordingly, she accepted employment as a domestic helper with the Gunters family at Grove Town. Her tour of duty with the family lasted over 30 years and included various assignments to include the regular household duties and much more. During this phase of her life, she distinguished herself as a dedicated employee and a human being who possessed an unusual capacity to accomplish physical labor. Her work ethic was truly second to none. She worked seven days per week taking care of the domestics, putting goats to graze, and ensuring that they were hydrated. During coffee and pimento seasons, she undertook her regular duties and also traveled to Prospect to harvest coffee and pimento. It was also her responsibility to ensure that these were dried properly and prepared for sale when their production was at that stage. Notwithstanding her fierce commitment to those jobs for which she was paid, Daisy prioritized the rearing of her children above all other responsibilities. This was for her a fundamental commitment. As such, her work ethic, ingenuity, and industriousness were top tier at home as well. She was a loving mother who demonstrated love in tangible and intangible ways. She took pride in being consistent and dependable as she reared her children. She was an excellent cook, washerwoman, and farmer. Even after working all day, she would ensure that we had a hot dinner, whether it was dumplings, ground provisions, and saltfish, or gumbo soup, porridge, or whatever she had. She would ensure that we were fed, and hunger was never a part of our experiences as children. For her, it was the norm to wash our clothes at night, while she was cooking or baking. And it was our joy to stay outside with her, holding the bottle torch and engaging in conversation with her. Those were priceless bonding opportunities that allowed for all her children to develop and cultivate special and unique relationships with her. Her loyalty to her family was further demonstrated in her love for all her grandchildren. In an effort to support the personal growth and development of her children, Daisy helped to raise several of her grandchildren. These include brothers Rohan, Rehan, and Robert, her granddaughters Kenesha and Kayla, and her grandsons Andre, Shaquille, and Cahill. In so doing, their parents were able to migrate to access economic opportunities or pursue higher education. By modern standards, it is quite reasonable to conclude that Daisy lived a modest life as the basic patterns of her existence were perpetuated over many years and many seasons with only occasional variations for travel to the United States and Canada. Notwithstanding, there was tremendous significance to her life as she demonstrated 
that she was fit to live and fit to live with. Over her 93 years, she became many things to many people. She loved her nieces and nephews and other relatives and was a friend, good neighbor, church sister and confidant to many people. Mama D, as she was affectionately called, was loved by many. The love and respect that was demonstrated to her created a strong support system for her, particularly over the last three years of her life when her independence became compromised. In July of 2023, she became ill and was hospitalized and diagnosed with a life-threatening illness. Her subsequent deterioration and hospitalizations created the need for private home care. Same was provided by Ms. Velda, Mrs. Velda Bird, Ms. Angelette Morgan, Ms. Selene Smith, and Ms. Sonia Lord. Daisy ailed for, over, for just over one year before her sojourn ended on July 31, I'm sorry, on October 31, 2024. She is survived by her children Lorna, Neville, Russell, Maxine, Orr, Donovan, Chefton and Marie, 28 grandchildren, 26 great-grandchildren, two great-great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and other relatives, beloved church family, loving neighbors, caregivers, and friends. Her daughter Beverly died in 2016, and our brother Donovan passed on November 28, 2024. We give thanks for a life well lived, and may her soul rest in peace, and life perpetual shine on her. good audience so far. And I'm going to ask you to remain seated. Um, our pastor will be coming to do a prayer for the family. The family members will remain seated. And the rest of the congregation will be standing as our pastor prays for the family. Good Can you stand with me as we do this prayer? Family member remains um, remain seated, and the rest of the congregation just stand with me as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done. Holy God, we come to you one more time. On behalf of the family of our late sister Daisy. You understand God and you know us. I lift them up before you right now. And I pray Holy Spirit that you will continue to guide them. This time Lord they need you now more than ever. We know from the beginning you create a family. God the enemy desire is to destroy the family. But this afternoon God we present them to you. We pray that you will keep them, stand by them, every step of the way. I pray, Lord, that you will guide them. Without you, Lord, they can do nothing. The human fail, but you never fail. I pray that you will continue to, oh God, keep them. Let no destruction, my God. I come against every plan of the adversary right now. And I pray that the peace of Almighty God will continue to be with them. Sustain them, Holy Spirit. Guide them every step of the way. I pray that you will build a fence around them. Those who are safe, God, I pray that you will keep them. Those who are not yet 
Lord, I pray that they will do so before the time of too late. Eternal God, who is the refuge and strength, you are still the pleasant help in time of needs. And if there is no time, God, that they need you, they need you now. I pray your blessing upon us. Father, we're about to leave to the final resting place to put away the remainder of your daughter. I pray for us, God, that you will journey with us. Thank you for your leading. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for comforting your children. We look to you, Holy Ghost, God. We give ourselves completely to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I'm asking the undertakers to come. We're going to be doing the recessional here. Platform officials will go first, followed by the casket. And the members of the, fam the family members will go immediately behind the casket. Sing the to another. Before the mountain were brought forth, or ever the heart, and the world were made, thou art God from everlasting, and the world without end. Thou turnest men to destruction, again thou sayest, come again ye children of men. 
for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, seeing that it is passed as a watch in the night. Yeah, continue, come on, come on. We are asking for your misbehavior right at this time. Turn on to me now. Turn on to me now. Alright, we're going to come up now. Run, run. Alright, we're going to come up now. Just a minute before we open um, just a minute before we open the casket. I, um, just a minute before we open the casket. If the family member um, I know these people are ready to take pictures, right? But please, you are going to view and just walk through. We cannot afford to stay here all the time for you to um to view. So you just make sure you look and go through. Don't worry to stop. Right? To take no picture for no long time. This side. Alright, so family go ahead and open. Okay, all right. Yeah. Holy, holy. So you look and move on, look and move on, and allow somebody else to come and see. Take a Remainder of our dear beloved sister, you are the everlasting God. We thank you, Lord, for journeying mercies. We thank you for your leading and your direction, Holy God of heaven, to this very moment. We lift you up, God. We thank you, my God, for the life of your daughter. And it pleased you, Holy God, to take her home. I pray, Lord, that you will rest with us uh, to the remainder of this homegoing service. Uh, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence, God, which is with us. Uh, continue to lead us, we pray. We look to you, Father in heaven, and we thank you for your continual blessing. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We're going to do the opening song, Sister Powell and the choir. We are at home. Precious memories. Haunts in angels Sent from somewhere to my soul How they linger Ever near me And the sacred past unfold Precious memories
heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, from henceforth, blessed are the dead which died in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for the rest from their labors. For as much as it had pleased Almighty God, in his wise providence, to take out of this world unto himself our dear beloved sister, we therefore commit her body to the ground, her dirt, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, looking for the general resurrection and the life to come. Thou knowest, Lord, the secret of our heart. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spear us, Lord, God most holy and merciful Savior. Thou, thou worthy judge, eternal, suffers not at the last days for pain of death to full God. Praise the Lord. Can we worship the Lord? Amen. Amen. Can we just give God some praise? Hallelujah. Can we lift up the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All right. The workmen, you can start lifting All Thank you. 